This is lesson three, double angles, from unit five, trig identities and equations of the advanced functions course. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the identities for sine, cos, and tan of double angles. So sine of 2x, cos of 2x, tan of 2x. We'll do some proofs of what those identities are and then look at the uses of those identities as well. So make sure you click on the link in the description so you can find a blank copy of the lesson and you can follow along as we go. So let's get started. Part one, proofs of double angle formula. So we'll start this lesson by doing the proofs of the double angle formula for sine and cosine. So when I say do a proof, what I'm do going to do is I'm going to always start by separating into left side, right side. And now that it's separated into left side, right side, I need to work on these sides completely separately to try and uncover that they are in fact the exact same thing, right? An identity is an equation that is true for all values of the variable. So I can use any other identities I know to help me prove this identity. And what other identities do we know? Well, let's consult our identity page. So here's the trig identity page of all the trig identities that we know. And currently we are trying to prove the double angle identity for sine. And to prove this identity, we can use any other identity we know, as long as it's not this identity itself, right? Don't use its own identity to prove itself, but any of these other identities that we know are fair game to try and prove this one, right? Because we know these ones are true. We proved these in previous lessons. So I think the easiest thing to do to prove the double angle identity for sine would be to rewrite that double angle as a compound angle. So we're going to use this identity to help prove this identity. And let me show you what I mean back in our lesson. So that compound angle identity for sine that I just showed you on our identity page, let me just rewrite that up here just so you remember it for a reference. So there's the compound angle identity for a sum of two angles for sine. So if I could rewrite this double angle here as a sum of two angles, I would be allowed to use this identity to help me prove this double angle identity. So I could rewrite 2x as a sum of x and x, right? x plus x is 2x. And now that it's a compound angle, a sum of two angles, I can use this identity up here. So I can rewrite this as sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. That's exactly what this identity up here tells me to do. And now I can simplify this. Notice that I have sine times cos plus cos times sine. Well, the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So let me rewrite that second product as instead of cos x times sine x, I'll write it as sine x times cos x. And now it's obvious that this term and this term are exactly the same. They're like terms, so I could just collect them together. I could just rewrite this as two sine x cos x. Right? One sine x cos x plus another sine x cos x is two sine x cos x. And now I've proved the identity. I've rewritten equivalent statements on the left side of my equation using other identities we know are true and proved this identity. So the left side is exactly the same as the right side. So the double angle identity for sine, so sine of 2x is equal to two sine x cos x for all values of x. That's what makes it an identity. Example two. Let's prove cosine of 2x is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x. And this proof is going to be very similar to the last one we did. So let's start by separating into left side, right side. And now that I have it separated, I need to work with these sides separately to try and prove that they're the exact same thing for all values of x. So I use other identities I know are true to rewrite these statements until I reveal that they're in fact the same thing. So let's consult our identity page to see what identities we could use to help prove this. So we're now trying to prove cosine of 2x equals cos squared x minus sine squared x. And like I said, we could use any other identity to help prove this. And I think an easy one to do would be choosing a similar strategy from when we proved sine of 2x. So let's use the compound angle identity for cosine. So let me rewrite this identity in our lesson book and use that to help us prove this one. So just as a reminder, cosine of a compound angle, so a sum of two angles, it's equal to. And now that we remember this compound angle identity, if I could rewrite this double angle as a compound angle, I could use it to help me prove this double angle identity. So I'll rewrite 2x as a sum of x plus x. x plus x is 2x. 
And now, I, now that I have a compound angle, I can use this identity up here to help me simplify this. So cosine of an angle plus an angle, this tells me to do cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So let me do that down here. Cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And if we look at our products, we have cos x times cos x, something times itself, well that's just the thing squared. So cos squared x minus sine x times sine x is sine squared x. And that's the left side of the equation. So we've proven this identity. The left side is in fact the same thing as the right side. So cos of 2x is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x. Note, there are alternate versions of the cosine double angle identity. Uh, we proved this one, the cosine of 2x equals cos squared x minus sine squared x, uh, by rewriting 2x as a compound angle and using the compound angle identity. But there are two other versions of the cosine double angle identity. If we look at our uh, identity page, you'll see that. So here's the identity page. If you locate cosine of 2x, there are three different identities for cosine of 2x. So let me just briefly explain to you where those come from. And they come from the Pythagorean identity. So if you remember the Pythagorean identity from previous courses, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So if we look back at our lesson, let me rewrite the Pythagorean identity here for you. Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And this could be rearranged, right? Uh, I could isolate sine squared x or cos squared x. If I isolate sine squared x, I'd have 1 minus cos squared x. And if I isolated cos squared x, I would have 1 minus sine squared x. So where did these two other versions of the cosine double angle identity come from? Well, they just come from either replacing the cos squared x in this version of the identity with what it says it's equal to right here, 1 minus sine squared x. Then we'd have 1 minus sine squared x minus another sine squared x, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And similarly, the other way. We could have replaced the sine squared x with 1 minus cos squared x, because the Pythagorean identity tells us that that's true, and then we would be able to generate this version of the identity. So now that you understand there are three versions of the double angle identity for cosine, uh, it depends on what the question is asking. Uh, it would depend on which one of these might be easiest to use, but they should all always generate the same answer. That's what makes it an identity. And then down here, I've given you the tan double angle identity. There's lots of ways we could prove it. We could do it, but we could prove it using the quotient identity, right? Tan of 2x would equal sine of 2x over cos of 2x. Or we could prove it using a compound angle identity, rewriting the 2x as an x plus x. There's lots of ways to prove identities. When I prove identities with you, I'm just showing you one of many possible ways. But for now, I'll just give you the double angle identity for tan. So now let's look at what can we use these identities for. So what are the uses of these identities? Let's do a few examples. Example one, simplify each of the following expressions and then evaluate. So I have two times sine of an angle times cosine of an angle. And it's important to notice that these angles match. That tells us that we are allowed to use the double angle identity for sine. If you remember the double angle identity for sine, sine of two x is equal to two sine x cos x. And in this identity, these angles match. And in this expression we're given, the angles match. So I could rewrite this as sine of 2 times the angle. So sine of 2 times pi over 8. And then I could simplify this. So 2 pi over 8 is the same as pi over 4. And then I could use my special triangle to get an exact answer for that. As a reminder, here's your isosceles special triangle. Reference angle of pi over 4, the sides are 1, 1, root 2. So sine opposite over hypotenuse from here would be 1 over root 2. Or rationalized, if we multiplied top and bottom by root 2, we would get root 2 over 2. Part B, 2 tan pi over 6 divided by 1 minus tan squared of pi over 6. So if we look back at the double angle identity for tan, notice that it meets the criteria of what we have. 2 times tan of an angle divided by 1 minus tan squared of an angle. So let me rewrite that here for you. Tan of 2 times an angle equals 2 times tan of the angle divided by 1 minus tan squared of the angle. And what angle do we have? 
it's pi over 6. It's important that those match for us to be able to use this double angle identity. So I could rewrite this as tan of 2 times the angle. So 2 times pi over 6. And 2 times pi over 6, well, 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3. That's also an angle in a special triangle, so we should be able to get an exact value for this. Let me just remind you of that half equilateral triangle, 2, 1, root 3, where the angles are pi over 3, pi over 6. So tan from pi over 3 would be opposite over adjacent, root 3 over 1. That's just root 3. Part 3 says, determine the value of trig ratios for a double angle. If you know one of the trig ratios for any angle, then it's important to know that we could find the value of the other two trig ratios for that same angle. So I just wrote that up there kind of as a hint, a hint for you as we're solving uh, these questions down here. And then we can then use that information to determine primary trig ratios for uh, a double angle. So let's look at example two. If cos theta equals negative two thirds, right? So it's giving us one of the primary trig ratios. Oh, and it tells us the angle is in quadrant two, right? Uh, being between pi over two and pi, that's quadrant two. Determine the value of cosine of two times the angle and sine of two times the angle. Now it doesn't ask us to solve for theta. We're not interested in theta. I just wanna know the, the cosine and sine double angle ratios for whatever the angle is. And we can get those without solving for the angle, right? If we wanna figure out cosine of two times the angle, cos of two theta, well, we know three different identities for cosine of a double angle. And what is the question, what information does the question give us? This is what's going to determine which version of the cosine double angle identity we use. It only gives us information about the cosine ratio. So if we look at our identity page, here are the three versions of the double angle identity for cosine. To do this first version, I need the cos and the sine ratio. To do the second version, I only need the cosine ratio. And to do the third version, I only need the sine ratio. Now, I know I could come up with the sine ratio, but since the question only gives us the cosine ratio, it would be easiest to just use this version of the identity. Because for that version, we only need the cosine ratio and the question gives it to us. So I know cosine of two theta equals two times cos cosine squared of theta minus one. And the question gives us what cos theta is equal to, right? Cos squared theta, make sure you understand that just means cos theta times another cos theta. That's what cos squared theta means. So two multiplied by negative two thirds times another negative two thirds, which I could just write as negative two thirds squared minus one. And then I can simplify this, square the negative two, square the three, that gives me four over nine. Two times four over nine is eight over nine. And then eight over nine minus nine over nine is negative one over nine. So that's the cosine double angle ratio for whatever angle theta is, but we don't need theta. We just wanted the cosine double angle ratio for it. So there we have it. The next part of this question asks us to find sine of two theta. Well, there's only one option for the identity of sine of two theta, and it involves two times the sine ratio and the cosine ratio. Well, the question gives us the cosine ratio, but it does not give us the sine ratio. So we're going to have to draw ourselves a little Cartesian grid and draw a diagram and be able to figure out what the sine ratio is equal to. So the question tells us that we are between pi over two and pi. That's important information. It tells us we are in quadrant two. So there is a terminal arm in quadrant two, and for whatever this angle is, whatever this angle is, it has a reference angle, and I know that cosine of the principal angle is equal to negative two thirds, right? That tells me that cosine of the reference angle is adjacent two over hypotenuse three. So I know two sides of this triangle. And then I could use Pythagorean theorem, which tells me this squared plus this squared equals this squared to be able to solve for the remaining side, right? Two squared plus I'll call that B, B squared equals three squared. And if I isolate B, I get nine minus four is five, square root it, I get root five. So this is root five. Now using this diagram and a good understanding of the cast rule, I should be able to get an exact expression for this double angle ratio now. So it tells me sine of two theta equals two 
multiplied by the sine theta ratio. And if I want sine of angle theta, I could do sine from the reference angle, opposite over hypotenuse, and I can leave it as a positive ratio because we are in a quadrant where sine is positive. And now I need cosine of the angle. So cosine of the angle would equal negative cosine of the reference angle. Negative cosine of the reference angle, negative because we are in the sine quadrant. So negative cos beta would equal negative two thirds adjacent over hypotenuse. And the question gave us that ratio, right? It told us cosine of theta was negative two thirds. And now we just have to multiply this together and simplify it. So I have to do in the numerator, two times root five times negative two, that's negative four root five. In the denominator, I have three times three, that's nine. So there's the sine double angle ratio. And it's an exact value. Last example, example three. It's very similar to example two. It says if tan theta is equal to negative three over four, and we are in quadrant number four, we are in quadrant four this time, right? We're between three pi over two and two pi, quadrant four. Determine the value of cosine of two theta. So when we're evaluating cosine of two theta, there are three options for uh, which identity we use. It doesn't matter which one we use uh, in this case because it only gives us the tan ratio. And if it only gives us the tan ratio, let's look at our identity page. Here on our identity page, we see the three versions of the cosine double angle identity. None of them involve the tan ratio. So we're going to have to do some extra work no matter which one of these we choose. We chose this one last time. So how about we choose this one this time? So we will use cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And I could get values for these ratios uh, if I draw myself a Cartesian grid. I draw my terminal arm in quadrant number four, right? Quadrant four has an angle between three pi over two and two pi, which the question tells us. And I know my angle theta, this is angle theta, has some reference angle beta, which I can use to help me figure out the cosine and the sine ratios. So it tells me that the tan ratio of theta is equal to negative three over four. That tells me the tan ratio from beta would equal opposite three over adjacent four. And then I could use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. And this is a Pythagorean triple, so that one's easy. The hypotenuse is five. And then don't forget your cast rule, C-A-S-T. Notice we're in the cosine quadrant, so only cosine is going to be positive. That's why the tan ratio is negative in this quadrant. So using that diagram, I should be able to replace my cosine ratio and my sine ratio uh, with an exact value. So I need to do cos squared theta. So that means cos theta times cos theta. Well, what's cosine of theta? It's equal to cosine of the reference angle, which is adjacent four over hypotenuse five. So I need to do four over five squared, right? Because it's the cosine ratio squared minus the sine ratio squared. So when I do the sine ratio of theta, that would be equal to negative the sine ratio of beta. Negative because we're in the cosine quadrant. So the sine ratio from beta would be opposite over hypotenuse, three over five. So I need to do negative three over five, right? Negative because we're in this quadrant. So negative three over five squared. Now I just have to simplify this. Square the four, square the five, that's 16 over 25. Minus square the negative three, square the five. That's nine over 25. And that leaves me with, seven over 25. So that's the ratio for cosine of two times the angle, whatever the angle is. So that's it for the lesson. Make sure you go ahead and click the link in the description so you can get the practice questions and you can practice using these double angle identities to get exact values for trig ratios.